Yeah, today, sorry, I cannot make it up the stairs to the stage because I had to walk down 10 flights of stairs coming down because the, my elevator in my building was out of order. So uh, hopefully they will fix it <laughs> by today. All right. And I think a lot of your, your buildings were affected during the storm, right? And it's still being under repair. So why don't we say, a, why don't we pray right now for all our sisters? Brothers and sisters, sorry, brothers and sisters who, have, who are affected. Okay, shall we do that? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for protecting us during the storm, Lord Father. Nobody was, you know, that we were all safe at home, Lord Father. Yeah, Lord, and we just want to thank you also, Lord Father, for, you know, protecting the church that it wasn't, you know, even though there were water coming in, but it wasn't as bad as we it would have been. So, Lord, we thank you for your hand of protection upon your people and upon your house, Lord Father. Right now, Lord Father, I lift up all my brothers and sisters who are affected by this storm, Lord Father, by the black rain. You know, some of the buildings are without electricity, without elevator. And, and uh, you know, some may even be without water or they cannot travel out because the road is blocked by landslides, Lord Father. So, Lord, I pray, Lord Father, that, you know, that wherever they are, Lord Father, that you just send your shalom and your joy to them, Lord Father. They could join us online, so they're not missing out. And also, Lord, I pray, Lord Father, that, you know, that, that the government give wisdom, the government, the, the logistics of, you know, cleaning up, clearing up, you know, the, the streets and the uh, city of Hong Kong so that, Lord, everyone will be able to go back to their normal routine very, very soon, Lord Father. So, Lord, we just want to thank you once again, Lord Father, for your goodness and mercy. In your most powerful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So, we are in this series, Sent. So, how many of you went out and talked to someone in these past few weeks? I know one person did. That's why we have a newcomer. Yay, amen. <laughs> you know, and that's what the sun is. It's you know, to go and just talk to the people around us, tell them about the goodness of God. And, you know, we've been learning that we are sent people, right? Pe sent by God and sent by the church. And then we learned that, and it's, you know, and God sent us, before he sent us, he commit himself to us, right? He betrothed himself to us with what? Remember the five, like the five words, righteousness, faithfulness, unfailing love, mercy, yeah. Remember? Yeah, and justice, right? And so we're not doing this on our own. He's with us. And then last week, we know that we are being sent, where are we being sent? We're being sent to bear witnesses for Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And, we're not, and also, God promised us that you're not doing this alone. You will receive the power from the Holy Spirit. So, you are to go with the Holy Spirit. You know, that to lead you and guide you to where you need to go, who you need to speak to, and give you the wisdom to speak into their needs. So, but still some of you might say, wow, you know, I don't know how. How can we do this? I'm so shy. I'm so scared. You know, I'm, so, I'm, just, a, I'm just a helper. I'm just a kid. I'm just an old lady. You know, I'm just a man. What can I do? Well, you know what? Like, you know, the C14 prophecy today, God built. He's the one that builds. So he is the one that is also going to teach us how. And today we're going to learn from the best. We're going to learn from Jesus. In an account in John chapter 4, how we do mission work. Okay, in the natural way and supernaturally with the help of the Holy Spirit. So let's go to John 4. It's a very familiar story to all of us because this is the story, the story of the account of where Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman in the well. By the well and asked, you know, asked her for a drink and through the conversation, he revealed himself to her and she recognized that he is Christ and she ran back to the village and tell everybody and because of it, 
many Samaritans, in the end of the chapter 4, towards the end of chapter 4, we learned that many Samaritans believed. Right? So let's find out what happened between Jesus encountering the woman too, many Samaritans believe. So, first of all, let's take a look in John chapter 4. Okay, verse 3. It says that he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. So he's been traveling. And in between Judea and Galilee, Galilee, he has to pass through Samaria. All right, so he came to the town of Samaria called Satar near the field that Jacob had given to his son <clears throat> Jacob, uh, Joseph. Sorry. And in verse 6, very significant, it says that Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, weary, can you say weary? As he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Can you say the sixth hour? Because these are two significant things. You see, I don't know about you, but when I'm traveling and if I'm hungry and I'm thirsty and I'm tired, I would head for the nearest restaurant. Okay? Jesus didn't. He went to the well. He was tired. He didn't go to the synagogue where he would be received with honor because that was the... There was, the, the culture in that time to receive the rabbi, you know. So he didn't go to the synagogue. He didn't go to a restaurant. He went to a well. And the sixth hour is in the afternoon. You know, it's uh, around, you know, when the sun is the hottest. And I don't know about you, usually by the well, there's only maybe a tree and then nothing else, right? So. Can you imagine he's already tired, he's already thirsty and hungry, and he's sitting there under the sun? What for? Right? What for? And then we find out in verse 7 that there was a reason he was there. It says, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. See, Jesus didn't do what is convenient. Jesus went out into the community where there will be people coming. And, you know, and I learned this from um, in, one of the, uh, in one of the conferences is that, you know, he stopped for that one person. And sometimes we have to do that too. You know, maybe it's an inconvenience for us. Maybe we have to step out of our comfort zone. Right? But we, sometimes we need to make that time to stop for that one person because that person needs to know the love of God, need to have you to pray for their needs. Right? He went and sat by the well. He was out there in the community. Right? Of course, I'm not saying that don't come to church, just go out. You need to come to church because remember what Irene was saying. She grew in her, in the word, in spiritually in the church. So you need that. But we need to also go out to reach out to the people up there. Okay? Amen? And guess what? He went and stopped for that one person. And that person happens to be a woman and happens to be a Samaritan. Now, you have to understand the background of the Jews and the Samaritans. See, in those days, Jews, they don't speak to Samaritans. Because even though Samar they're cousins, okay, Samaritans were half-breeds. You see, because in the Jewish culture, you have to be pure breed, right? If you're a half-breed, then you are step aside, like get out of the way. Right? They don't speak to them. And in, the, in that culture, men do not speak to women because women is a lower class. So, when, what happened in verse 7? Let's read on. It says, a woman from Samaria, Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. He started the conversation. 
All right? And look at the response of the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman in verse 9 said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Like she was like, whoa, wait a minute. You're not supposed to talk to me. I'm a Samaritan and I'm a woman. How can you speak to me? Right? Sometimes, we don't have to, you know, when we go out to, and reach out to people, and Jesus is showing us that, you know, when you're on a mission from God, you go where he wants you to, he, he directs you to go, and you go and you talk to whom he directs you to speak to, regardless of race, of culture, of language, of gender, regardless of division that the world sees. And I'm really pleased because, you know, a few weeks ago, some of you went out for a treasure hunt and you came back and told me that, you know, when after you, you prayed and God show, gave you the particulars and when you went out, you saw people, you didn't see just Filipinos. I'm so proud of you guys. You saw people that fit whom God sent you, and you went and spoke to them, and you spoke to Indonesians, you speak to local, so you didn't, so you did not let the divide separate you, stop you from reaching out. So that is what this is all about. Amen. 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 Yeah. So it's because sometimes, I myself included, sometimes I'm like that too. When I go out, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, okay, you know, like this, okay, most likely I would choose a woman, you know, older, looks friendlier, you know, so that they don't, it seems like they have more time <laughs> so that I could talk to them. But this not, God doesn't want us to just like, God doesn't want us to do it our way. He wants us to do it his way. So Jesus spoke to a Samaritan woman, which was cultural no-no in those days, but he broke through the show show and the culture barrier and reach out to her and it and as we learn through the story that was exactly what was needed because he spoke into her life and because he spoke into her life it turned around it changed and she's no longer the same and she was so you know joyful so happy, she ran out and told everybody in the city. Now, and that is a miracle in itself. Why? Because, you see, in those days, when you go for, you know, the uh, Bible scholars and theologians, they've all agree on this. Is in those days in the culture, when you go to the well, you know, the ladies, they go during the early morning when it's not so hot. You know, they go, those are, they can be comfortable, they could draw the water, they could gossip, then they go home. So nobody goes out in the afternoon because it's so hot. Right? There's nobody there. But this woman went to the well in the afternoon where there was nobody. What does that tell us? It tells us that she doesn't, maybe she's, she doesn't get along with the people in the city. Or maybe the people in the city don't get along with her. Right? Maybe there's something she needs to hide. She's afraid to see people. Yet, Jesus chose to sit there for her. There may be people in your life that you don't really enjoy seeing. There might be people in your life that you think, hmm, you know, but God says, that is the one that needs to hear about me the most. Are you willing to go and make time for that person the way that Jesus is showing us right now? You know, as followers of Christ, we can't just say, I believe, and then do, our, do things our way. We have to do things God's way, and he's showing you right now. He went out to the community. He spoke to a person, broke through the cultural, the language, you know, the race divide. Are you willing to do that? And let's see what happens next. Jesus operate in the 
gifts of the Holy Spirit. We know that how? When he asked her in verse 16 to said to go, tell your husband and come here. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, yeah, you're right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you, have, you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. You know, that, how would Jesus know this? This is the first time he's ever been to this city, first time he met this girl, lady. How would he have known her life? It was through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So when we minister, when we go out on, a, on mission to reach out to people, we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. What is it that, what, how can I pray you know, for this person. Lord, tell me what is, you know, how to bless them. How to, what to, what to speak into their lives. You know, you know, we have, you know, during the outer call, right, we ask you to come out and pray. How, now, here we know everybody, so it's, you know, it's easier. But you know, we're back in the main church. We, sometimes strangers come out, you know, on people with honest, I have no idea who they are. And usually it's like, God, what can, how do you want me to pray for this person? What do you want me to say? I remember one, the first time I met Katrina, I was in the older team, she came out, and, I was, and it was for healing. I don't know her. <laughs> and I was like, God, how can I pray for her? And God gave me a picture of a knot. And I'm like, I don't know why, but God gave me a picture of a knot. Does that say anything to you? And she goes, yeah. She goes, my back muscle. It's in pain and it feel like it's, you know, it's like a knot. And it was like, wow, oh God, you're so amazing. So I pray for her. You know, sometimes when we go out and talk to people, because we don't always know what their needs are, pray, ask the Holy Spirit to come and help you, reveal to you what their needs are so that you could pray for them, you know? So, 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 what did, so, so far, Jesus goes out into the community. Okay, he stepped out of his comfort zone. He is with the people. And he speaks to someone who is not like him. And he operates in the supernatural gifts. All right? And then, you know what he did? He offered, him live, he offered her living water. He offered her living water. We go back in verse We go back further up. When he asked her for, give me a drink. And then the Samaritan woman, why are you speaking to me? And then Jesus answered her. She goes, if, in verse in, uh, 10, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is speak, saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Wow. He's offering living water that comes from him flowing to her and he says that and when you drink of it everyone who drinks of this water from the well will be thirsty again in, in, in verse 12 but whoever drinks of the water that i will give him will never be thirsty again the water that i will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life the living water that Jesus offered gives life, eternal life. Give, and he, they will, you will never be thirsty. You will never need to drink again because this living water is his, is his word. It's his, the relationship that you will have with him, right? And it, is, and it gives hope. It gives hope. And you know what? And for all of you, you are all, you have all drank or drank from his living water. That's why you're sitting here. And it says that everyone who drinks this water, God, that, that Jesus gave him, will become in him a spring of water. So right now, you are the carrier of God's living water, welling up to eternal life. You are to flow this water out. 
to other people so that they may drink this living water as well. You know, I am, I am in the um, hospital visit team. And we've been, you know, we go to visit uh, members and their families in the hospital and pray for them and everything. And everything, you know, and a lot of them came to the Lord. It was very good. And then, in, but then we felt that once they came, went out of the hospital, that the relationship is gone, cut, right? So we were thinking about it. And then a few of the members came up with, why don't we visit home? And then 2019 happened, and then 2020, you know what happened? No more visit in the hospitals, right? And so we started home visits. So we've been visit, and, and when you know, everything was closed down, we, we started calling the people, we started calling them, we started texting them, sending them prayers, keeping that relationship alive. And there was one of the uh, lady, one of the members, and the home visit team. She went to visit her ex-colleague who is, uh, because of health, lives in the nursing home. And she brings some of the team members with her. And at first, you know, he was not a believer. At first it was like, don't want to talk about, you know, not interested. But they kept going. They kept going because, you know, and they start talking to him, they bring him, you know, they, they bring him, uh, you know, drinks and foods, fruits and things, and they just poured out their love on him. And, you know, and he felt that love so strong that he started to open up. And now he's happily enjoying sharing the word with them. And you know what? And because now it's open, right? Everything is open. So, and the, and the nursing home allowed them to bring him outside in the little park in front of the nursing home. And so they will sit with him there and they will have a tea party, you know, with cakes and stuff. And, and you know the best part? They've started and they even bought extra cakes so that they could give to the nursing staff. So now not only are they ministering to him, they're ministering to the people that works there. And he's... And last few times, he's beginning to bring out his neighbor, the, the people in the neighboring bed. So, <laughs> so now they have a group. <laughs> they have a group. They have a big group in the afternoon tea where they're talking about, you know, where they start talk, reading the word of God. They start praying. And so, you know, sometimes you have to go out of, you know, you don't know where God brings you. But when, now that you're, you have this living water in you. You need to offer it out. Offer that love to people. Build relationship with people so that, you know, that their lives can change. And, you know, through that, it was, such, it was so fun. It's so funny because now when they send us photos of their visit, now you, have, you can see a big group of people. You can see more people sitting there, you know, enjoying the fellowship because people need to know that they are loved. Just like this woman, she needs to know that her life matters. Someone knew her life, but they still choose to stay and reach out to her. You know what happened? She said, could this be the Christ? She ran back. Right? She ran back into town in verse 28. Listen. And she ran and talked to people. Come see a man who told me all that I've ever did. Can this be the Christ? You know the fact, you know what happens when you encounter Jesus, when you drink from his living water? Your life turns around. Remember she went to the well at noon because she didn't want to meet anybody. Look at what she did. She ran back to town. She said to everyone she met, look at this, she, and, said to the peop, and said to the people, people in the village, she is no longer afraid to talk to people. Why? She had an encounter with Christ, and that encounter changed her life. So she went back. Living water has been poured into her and it welled up and she needs to pour it back out. She went back and she says, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. 
Can this be the Christ? And guess what? Because of what she said in verse 20, uh, verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus. Can you say believed in Jesus? Why? Because, because of this woman's testimony, because of your testimony, people are going to believe in Christ. Amen? He told me, what is the testimony? He told me all that I ever did. So when, hey, and, so, and the Samaritans went to Jesus and they asked him to stay for two more days. And Jesus stayed and spoke to them, teaching them. Remember, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. He spoke to them, he taught them. And many Samaritans believed because of one person, because Jesus stopped for that one person. Are you willing to stop for that one person? Amen? And if you are willing, I tell you, lives will never be the same. Atmosphere will change. Just like that nursing home, I believe that every one of them is going to hear the good news because my sister and the team did not give up and they went and spoke to him and built relationship with him, with, with this, his, her ex-colleague. And because of this, so many people are coming to the Lord. Amen? Let us pray. Yeah, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Indeed, your word never goes out empty. Yeah, even in people we think that, you know, they, they are not interested, but if we continue to go and shower your love to them, it will take root, Lord Father. There will be change, Lord Father. So help us, Lord Father, to not just be, you know, not just to be believing Christians, but to be doing Christians, Lord Father. And help us to, you know, to move, Lord Father, to walk out, Lord Father, of the church, Lord Father, and go into the community, Lord Father, and go with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, Lord Father. And Lord, and you point us to those who need to hear your word, Lord Father, who need to feel, know your love, Lord Father, so that, Lord, that we may pour out your living water on to them, Lord Father, so that they can taste your goodness, Lord Father, they can know your love. Thank you, Lord. In your most wonderful, amazing name.